Hey Canucks fans, welcome to Clay's Canucks Commentary for Thursday, October the 11th. I'm Clay Emo at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clayton Emo on Instagram. And this is my Canucks take, all in one take. Right off the bat, I want to say, Dad, I love you. I miss you. You'll always be my hero. Today is my dad's 14th death anniversary. He passed away on October 11, 2004. It was a Thanksgiving Monday, actually, when he did pass. So uh, you might remember three days ago on Thanksgiving Monday, I kind of detailed um, his passing and how it's because of him. It's because of my dad, Larry, that I'm a Canucks fan and likely uh, why I do the things I do today with respect to the team. So, Dad, once again, I love you. I miss you. Um, and, and thanks for looking out for me. And thanks, uh, Canucks fans, for allowing me to do that. Today, the Canucks fans play in Tampa Bay. Game number four. They are one and two. And we just got word of the early line rushes. And it looks like Brendan Lysick is the odd man out today. So, Anton Rizal still making his way back. We know Schaller was the healthy scratch um, just for first two games, we know that it was um, Tyler Mott in game number three. Tyler Mott gets back in. It looks like it will be Brendan Leipzig out. Speaking of Tyler Mott, what an opportunity. He will be playing with Bo Horvat and Brock Besser. So maybe his hustle, maybe his, de his defensive awareness. He does have offensive capability. So I'm actually very intrigued. And I'm very, um, you know, I think it's a great opportunity for Tyler Mott. So first line is Mott, Horvat, and Besser. Horvat and Besser are both minus seven after three games. Maybe, like I said, will help him in that in that category as well, in that area as well. Maybe just make them a more dangerous line. So Mott, Horvat, and Besser up top. Then, of course, you have Pedersen between Eriksson and Godolbin as your second line. Third line, once again, Brandon Sutter, Sven Barchi, and Jake Vertanen. Like to look at that line. And fourth line will be Beagle, Schaller, and Granlin. So, again, that means Leipzig's. Uh, sitting and that means Roussel still not ready to go. D is the same. Edler and Tanev, Stetcher and Hutton, Pouliot and Gabranson. That means Delzato and Biega will be sitting. And it looks like Anders Nielsen will be a net making his first start of the season. So Canucks fans, what do you think of that? What do you think of Tyler Mott getting in? What do you think of him playing with Bo and Brock? What do you think of Nielsen getting in? What kind of game games do you expect from each of them? And are you fine with the three D pairs staying the same? Basically the big story there is Delzato sits for a second straight game. Leave a comment below, as always, I'd love to read, react, and reply. The other thing I want to quickly talk about is um, being interesting. Ex-management and current management being on the radio the last couple days. Mike Gillis, the former GM of the Vancouver Canucks, he was on TSN 1040 yesterday. And Francesco Aquilini, the owner of the Vancouver Canucks, he was on Sportsnet 650 this morning. Very quickly, Gillis was on for a long time with Matt Sakaris and Blake Price. And I haven't heard the whole interview yet, just heard bits and pieces, but he talked a lot about, um, obviously, he spent the whole time talking, the majority of the time, talking about his time here. But in essence, that 2011 Cup run, how he feels, like many Canucks fans, he will never truly get over it. And of course, he was he was right in there as the GM. He was feeling the pressure. He was feeling the hate from other other teams, other even other Canadian fans and other Canadian teams and other Canadian markets. He talked about the losses of Malhotra and Ham Hughes and Michael Samuelson and how maybe with those guys, the result is different. And it was very it was fascinating. I, I liked Mike Gillis when he was here. Um, he acknowledged that it, the drafting wasn't that strong at that time. But, you know, look at the guys that they did, they did have. And maybe, you know, in a perfect world, I think he even said he would go back and he would do things a little different the way he wasn't so emotional, the way he would, he would even remove more obstacles. Like, those are my words, not his. But it's easy to say that now, right, seven years later. Because right when you're in the middle, when you think of it, when you think you're only one game away, you are only one game away. You have the best team in, in franchise history. There's a lot there. So we don't have to go into it too much. But I, as you, many of you know, that was my first year as being a season ticket holder, 2010-2011. I was there in Game 7 when the big, ugly Boston Bruins uh, won that Stanley Cup by beating the Canucks 4 nothing. And I actually used that night a lot in my talks uh, you know, to Christian teens, to, to youth ministries and youth groups. And I talk about what happened after the game, actually, the, the way that the, the fans started to riot and make really bad decisions. And actually tied in nicely to to how we can witness to our faith. But that's another thing. If you want to ask me about that, ask me in the comments and I can talk to you about that another time. So great to hear Mike Gillis yesterday. And this morning, it was great to hear Francesco Aquilini on Sportsnet 650. Started with James Sabalski, Paris Sikalski, and Rick Dollywan. Started right off the bat by talking about Trevor Linden. And you could tell um, that there's a lot there and there's a lot that he can't say. Because he said, on, on two occasions, he said, well, he said that he, has, he still has a good relationship with Trevor, or he had one, um, he, but that there is a relationship with Trevor. But twice he said, out of, out of respect for Trevor and the current management team, I won't say much. Out of respect for Trevor and the current management, I won't say much. So it sounds like, unless 
uh, Francesco is really good at deflecting. It sounds like the the conflict was between Trevor and likely Benning and Wisebrod. So, uh, you know, Trevor and management, as opposed to between Trevor and the owners. Now, the owners, I don't know if they're forced to pick a side between Trevor and Benning, or, and, and Francesco Aclini, throughout the 40 minute interview, did keep using the terms of his job is to provide resources. But Benning, management makes all the hockey decisions, Benning and Green. So, you know, reading into it, I think it was a, a Trevor Linden Jim Benning, Jim Benning conflict. I think Aquilini had to get in there a little bit, either to mediate or he had to be known, you know, he had to know what was going on. And ultimately, we saw the result with Trevor with his very quick exit in at the end of July there. So, you know, who knows if the full truth will come out. Trevor Linden and his camp and his people have been very, very quiet. But everything we've been reading, everything we've been hearing points towards a conflict between Trevor Linden and Jim Benning. And maybe their vision for rebuilding free agents, sitting old guys or veterans, whatever it may be. I'm sure we'll continue to hear more. Or maybe we'll have to wait for someone's cool book to come out. Aside from that, Equilini talked about some lighter things, his football, his high school football career, talked about um, the Overwatch League, and of course talked about the current state of the team, saying, yeah, it's not easy. You can't buy yourself out of something like this. He acknowledged fully that it's a rebuild, but of course, like many Canucks fans, he's excited about the Pedersons and the Bessers and the Horvats um, and Quinn Hughes of the world. So wasn't the most earth-shattering interview um, overall, but I think... The, the key takeaway you take away, uh, you get from Aquilini's interview is the fact that he made himself available for 40 minutes uninterrupted on, on a radio station as opposed to simply um, getting his message out via Twitter. So Canucks fans, that's what I got for you today. Canucks in Tampa Bay starting at 4.30. Mike Gillis was on the radio. Francesco Aquilini was on the radio. Anything I, that you heard yourselves on those interviews stick out to you or anything that I just said to you right now stick out maybe that whole affirmation or confirmation a better word of the whole Lyndon Benning conflict. Leave a comment below as always. Love to read, react, and reply. You can talk about the lineup changes tonight. Mott in, Nielsen in. That means um, that Leipzig and Markstrom are out. You can talk about Gillis, your memories from that, that team and that run. You can talk about Aquilini. Do you like him? No, I actually thought he come, came across as very likable today. But hey, I'm, I'm kind of biased. As some of you know, I have an re existing relationship with a work relationship with, with his brother Paolo Accolini, which I can talk about in another video. Okay, Canucks fans, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I appreciate all of you. Give this video a like if you like what I'm doing on this channel. Enjoy the game. I'll probably check in actually tonight because I'll be able to watch this game with a quick uh, two minute summary right after the game, but we'll see. I've even toyed around with, with live streaming the third period, but I'm not sure if anyone wants to sit there and watch my face on YouTube any more than you have to, but we'll figure that out. Have a great day. God bless and go Canucks go.